Hey there viewers, today I would like to show you my concept survival kit or bugger bag that rides in my automobile to aid my survival should the unexpected occur when I'm out of the house. In case you are wondering, the pack on the left is my backpacking system housed in an Arterix Bora 80. Without any doubt, the most comfortable pack I ever used. I'll show the system in a separate video, so stay tuned. Let's start with the pack itself on this system. This is the Arterix Mira 50, which Arterix markets to rock climbers. This thing is a tank, weights 6 pounds empty. It's made of 630 denier waterproof nylon. The sides and the bottom are padded to give contents extra armor plating from dropping and throwing the pack around. Just look at the huge size of this YKK coil zippers. Quick note, when I buy packs, I always make sure they have YKK zippers. It's an indication of quality. Manufacturers often cut corners in this area by putting cheap, no-name flimsy zippers that have nowhere near the durability or strength that the YKK zippers offer. But overall, I just like the simplicity of the pack. It's comfortable. It can go from wilderness to urban settings without looking too much out of the ordinary, as opposed to giant rucksacks or militaristic designs which stick out like sword thumbs in urban areas. Now on the exterior I have several important accessories attached. Firstly a water resistant seal line case for storing and fast access to my smartphone and ID cards. Inside the case there is also a small a lock sack ziplock to quickly waterproof my phone if it starts raining. Another seal line case on the left waist belt holds a small canister of pepper spray which is my first line of defense against four legged or two legged predators. On the right waist belt is yet another sealant case. I keep my Swiss Army rescue knife for quick access. It includes a window smasher at the tip, seat belt cutter, standard blade, Phillips screwdriver and flat screwdriver, tweezers and toothpick. The bright yellow case glows in the dark to help you retrieve the knife if you drop it in poorly lit areas. This here is a retractable tether for attaching constantly used items such as GPS devices, two-way radios, etc. It will exert 5 ounces of retraction force. A very loud whistle, probably the loudest whistle I ever heard, it even works and can be heard underwater. It's called the windstorm in case you are wondering. We all know what this is. A machete, this one in particular is a K-Bar Kukri machete, can come in real handy in any survival scenario. Endless uses from clearing out bushes to making shelter, cutting wood, or cutting yourself and bleeding to death if you're not careful. A titanium carabiner in a locking carabiner on the other side holding the machete. This is my water bottle stainless steel canteen which has printed in it all kinds of survival tips. Finally on the exterior I keep my Phoenix LD41 flashlight that uses 4 AA batteries. It is a very bright light, puts out 520 lumens of luminosity, great for search and rescue operations at night. I also have a 200 lumen Phoenix headlamp in the top pocket, which I prefer using for most situations when I need constant light as it will free up both my hands to do other tasks. On the front kangaroo pocket I keep my clothing items, which also act as protective padding for the other contents inside, should I happen to toss my pack around. I want my clothing to be easily accessible from the rest of the pack, so the kangaroo pocket works perfect. Clothing wise I put emphasis on the essentials, an Arcteryx shirt, a pair of insulated Arcteryx gloves for cold weather, two changes of underwear and two pairs of thick wool socks. Also included will be some waterproof pants and a warm jacket. These are my other pair of gloves, intended for heavy duty use as they are made of thick leather and triple stitch They will help keep my hands protected from sharp objects typically found in disaster zones such as rubble, glass and sharp metals. I am very impressed with the high quality considering they only costed me the equivalent of 35 US dollars but are the same quality if not higher than what you find in gloves that cost over $100. Another item I like to keep easily accessible are two water bottles and my hygiene kit which is stored in a dry bag to prevent smells and leaks from contaminating the rest of the pack. Opening the kit will reveal a C2 Summit microfiber towel and two sub kits. One deals with general hygiene, the other deals with restroom sanitation. Both kits are housed in clear Ziploc bags which will further contain scents and possible leaks from any of the toiletry items inside. 
The hygiene kit contains a bottle of unscented all-purpose soap, toothpaste along with a toothbrush, q-tips, underarm deodorant. Please include one in your own kit, not for your own sake, but for the sake of others. Fiskars mini scissors, a mirror. I always include a nail clipper because long nails are unsanitary and just plain gross. You can actually get sick from eating with your dirty big nails. So cut them. Finally, a package of unscented disposable body wipes that contain benzylcholine chloride, a non-alcohol based antiseptic that will help keep and neutralize odor causing bacteria in your body. Excellent item to have when you have no access to an actual shower or when water must be conserved for drinking. The restroom kit contains 32 unscented moist towelettes which are more hygienic than plain restroom tissue. 10 seat covers for using it in unsanitary public restrooms such as those found in emergency shelters. There's also 6 antiseptic hand towelettes for sanitizing hands in case there is no soap and water available. And that is my general hygiene kit. Now let's take a look at the contents I keep in the top compartment of my pack. First item is a write in the rain, write in the rain outdoor journal for writing directions, keeping logs, and writing your own thoughts so you don't go insane. On the back is a pressurized space pen that can write in any conditions originally developed for the Apollo space program because regular pens don't work in zero gravity. Duh. A Gerber fixed blade survival knife. The handle is wrapped in orange paracord that you can use for other purposes if needed. Very cool little knife, inexpensive too. One of my sharpening stones and a gear repair kit because it's not a matter of if gear breaks down but when and when it does you better have the means to fix it properly. I have a, some strong glue, sewing kit, spare zippers and gear pouches and of course a regular roll of duct tape. I also have a bigger chunk of military duct tape in here, Gorilla duct tape. A Leatherman Wave multi-tool, very handy item. It's like having a mini toolbox in your bucket bag. It is heavy but I am willing to compromise with it for its usefulness. Some Kleenex tissue always comes in handy, 100% deep mosquito repellent a must have when you're outdoors, 100 feet of 550 paracord. My fire kit with two lighters, storm matches, wet fire tinder and a lot my fire flint. A good fishing kit with plenty of fishing line hooks, sinkers, floats and a handy beginner's guide to freshwater fishing with clear instructions and illustrations. Very useful if you never fished before, it will also save you time and frustration, especially if you're trying to fish to feed yourself in a survival scenario. These are my two other sharpening implements, the pen shade bonnets for sharpening serrations. Opening the main compartment will reveal four color-coded modules, each containing the essentials for survival, including some basic comfort items. Each is labeled with the respective gear it's housing. These modules, as I call them, are simply C-Line Black Canyon Drive Axe, extremely rugged, not your typical backpacking drive axe. C-Line claims it's the toughest ones they make and I won't dispute that. Generally, most of their products are of excellent quality and craftsmanship. I decided to go with a modular approach as opposed to just throwing the gear in there for several key advantages these drive axes are going to offer over conventional zipper pouches. The main one, of course, is that it's going to keep my contents dry in severe weather, even if you submerge the pack in the water the gear will be fine. Secondly, it will give the pack buoyancy. If I need to cross a lake or river, the pack won't sink down and me with it. Quite the contrary, it will turn the pack into a flotation device to hold on to if needed. For those who don't know how to swim, that can be a lifesaver in itself. I want this kit to work across a wide range of environments that includes aquatic ones. Let's explore the contents of each module now. Yellow module contains book guides on survival and medical care as well as my first aid kit, signaling kit and some face masks which will be the first item to come out by the way. Very important for many disasters where there is dust in the air as well as to protect myself from airborne pathogens if there is a pandemic going on. This bag contains RX medications that can save someone's life if no medical care is available for long periods of time. Included are two types of antibiotics that still show effectiveness in my region. 
my signaling kit by Orion Safety Products. Some of the items were added by me. Let's take a look at the contents inside of it. The main item is a 12 gauge flare gun with four aerial flares. One is already loaded in the gun itself. There is a damper installed to prevent it from accidentally going off. This is a must have if you're stranded and need to signal an aircraft or ship to make your location known. Don't assume survival scenarios are just gonna come down to hiding away from everyone or blending in. Statistics show otherwise. These are the three other aerial flares. An orange smoke signal for signaling in the daytime burns for one minute, creating a dense bright orange smoke cloud. A good quality glow stick. Orange space blanket can be used for many things in survival scenarios including signaling. A blast match fire starter with two cubes of wet fire tinder. Signal mirror. Another storm whistle, this one bright yellow. Mini silver compass and some storm matches. Once you light them, nothing will put them out, not even submerging them underwater. Moving on, we find two book guides. One deals with survival and the other first aid. Both offer easy to understand detailed information of what you need to know without getting overly technical. The first one, titled Wilderness Travel Medicine, is small in size but big in scope. Goes right to the point in what you need to do in most serious and not as serious illnesses and fractures. In it, you will find what medications to administer and for how long. It also offers improvisation techniques if you don't have the proper medical gear with you. I will highly encourage you to get a good medical book and comprehensive first aid kit to complement it. In big disasters, access to hospitals could be problematic or non-existent. Most hospitals run at near full capacity on a daily basis as is. It does not take much to completely overwhelm the system. Of course, we cannot take the whole clinic with us, but it is an area I put a lot of emphasis on because we don't need first aid until we do. The second book guide, conveniently titled Outdoor Survival Guide, cuts through the crap and lists the 95 most common survival scenarios people will face and what to do in each. In an intuitive manner, you will find information on how to make emergency shelters, navigating using the night sky, finding water and purifying it, how to skin and cook a snake, and even making a survival raft out of branches, just to name a few. Each page contains big clear pictures to give you a general idea of what the author is talking about. Very useful when you're stressed. Hobbing reference guides will save you time, frustration, and possibly your own life by allowing you to get it right the first time. Great book all around. Highly recommended. We move on to the actual first aid kit itself. It's housed in a Conterra Deluxe organizing pouch, by far the best small first aid organizer I have found. Of course, like all Conterra organizers, it does not come with the actual first aid materials, those were provided by me. The bottom section of the kit includes a SAM splint, disposable thermometers, small mirror for performing first aid on my face, safety pins, high quality tweezers, Benadryl itch relief spray, triple antibiotic ointment, and a triangular bandage. Middle section includes a Celox hemostatic and tourniquet for stopping severe bleeding, an ice bandage for sprains, medications kit, CPR kit, and ice first aid kit. Top section contains two gauze rolls gloves, cotton balls, waterproof tape, and general first aid section for cleansing and closing wounds, blister treatments, nose hemostatics, etc. There's also a mammoth headlamp that provides perfect light for performing first aid at night. It uses one triple double A battery, I'm sorry, extremely lightweight. I might make an in-depth review of this kit later on, but for now this is all I care to show on first aid. If you are interested in buying an organizer like this, you can just google the company's name, Conterra Technical Products. The model is Deluxe Organizer Kit and it's made in the USA. Moving on, we find the system's power plant, a Gold Zero Noma 13 solar panel that collects 13 watts from the sun. It is enclosed in an anti-static aluminized bag to protect it from possible EMPs. To complement the solar panel, I have a small sea line waterproof bag that's stored in the top pocket of my bag. Inside of that Ziploc is housed a Guy 10 battery recharger which will allow me to recharge my N-loop AA batteries using a solar panel which I can then use to power up my flashlight, cell phone and other small electronics I might take along. Water and cookware. Of course the most important thing for our immediate survival is water. Not enough of it and we die quickly but too much of it and we can't carry it. It's a hard act to balance, therefore the logical thing to do is to carry the best water filtration system we can afford which will allow us to filter water we come across. Hopefully you plan your water replenishing sources ahead of time. 
The first item is 30 MSR water purification tablets. Each purifies a liter of water for a total of 30 liters. I have chosen the Katadin pocket microfilter as the standard for all my emergency kits because it's without any doubts the most rugged, longest lasting filter. It allows for the filtration of about 13,000 gallons before it needs a replacement filter. It is also the simplest to maintain. All you do is unscrew the unit to expose the ceramic element, which you then scrub with a sponge and water flow is restored. Very simple. For cooking, I have included a Jetboil Titanium Integrated Cooking System, primarily because I'm carrying freeze-dried food and this boils water extremely fast and efficient. One 230 gram canister of fuel will boil about 25 liters of water, and also it is extremely versatile, can be converted to take regular pots with the included pot support. Of course I'll need some utensils to it, so I have blue titanium spork by Snow Peak. I do have water itself in pouches, 42 ounces total, plus the other two water bottles in the top compartment of my pack. Next item is an MSR dromedary bladder. It will allow me to carry 6 liters of water. I also bought the optional hose with bite valve to turn it into a hands-free hydration system. One thing I like is that I can attach it securely once it's spilled to the top of my pack and the buckles will securely hold it in place. Let's move on to the food module. As I stated earlier, I'm carrying mostly freeze-dried food, Mountain House in particular, they are my favorite, at least when I'm backpacking. I tried other brands like Backpackers Pantry and Mary Jane's Farm and I was not too impressed with their flavors, but that's just my personal taste. There are all kinds of options when it comes to emergency kit foods, but none can beat the amount of caloric energy freeze-dried food will give you for its weight, provided you have a water source to rehydrate them, of course. Some people have stated that you can eat them as is if you have no water, but I would suggest otherwise unless you want to get some serious intestinal blockade. It will also severely dehydrate you, a definite no if you're short on water. Now I have 6 main entries, I will also be adding 6 pouches of instant oatmeal for breakfast because I don't like eating heavy foods in the morning. A can of Spam and some instant mashed potatoes will go nicely together if I'm really hungry. I have 2 ice cream sandwiches to satisfy my sweet cravings. Four biodegradable utensils can come in handy if you're sharing food with someone else. For drinks, I keep Guru Electrolyte Replacement Tablets, gives water a sports drink taste. Another pack of Guru Protein Shake Mix for battery recovery after a long strenuous days. Five Abita organic tea bags, three chocolate mixes, and a bag of the only coffee I like. German rock sugar, olive oil, and salt. Finally, a block of rations that will give me a couple of extra days if I completely run out of food, time given in which I hopefully find more food. All total, this food should last me 10 days at least if I'm careful. And that's the food. Sleeping and shelter. We move on to the last module that contains my sleeping gear. I don't care what anyone says on this subject, all I know is that having a good night's sleep is absolutely essential if you expect to have full use of your mental and physical abilities. My main sleeping item is a premium 26x72 sleeping pad by XFIT, very comfortable, I also use an exact same pad for backpacking, a thermal breathable BB by AMK, a very warm Swiss Army microfleece blanket that is water repellent a tiny inflatable pillow by Big Agnes. Another item I included that folds more for a wilderness use is a lightweight hammock made of parachute nylon. I can always use it as an extra blanket if I don't end up in the wilderness though. Last item is a heavy duty Mylar space blanket that can be used as a clean surface to set my sleeping pad or as a blanket in itself, etc. A multi-purpose item. And that's it. All this is subject to modification in the near future as I find better equipment to outfit my quits with. Some of you might have noticed something missing that you think is crucial, if that's the case then let me know. Just keep in mind one thing, we do not have to carry every single item for every possible eventuality in our packs. If we don't have something, we can always use our brains and improvise. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching and I'll be making some more videos soon.